can do several different things. Do you see a pattern in what this particular scatter plot is doing? Upward. What'd you call it? Yes. It is a positive association or a positive correlation, meaning as my x coordinates are getting bigger. No, 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 you're not going to do this. You're gonna this. As my x coordinates are getting bigger, coming out this way, which, what are my y coordinates doing? They're getting bigger. So on a positive association, when your x's get bigger, your y's get bigger. If your x's get smaller, your y's get smaller. Everything goes in the same direction. But sometimes you can have a scatter plot that goes in the other direction. And that is a negative association or a negative correlation. So now, when your x coordinates are getting bigger, what are your y coordinates doing? As my x's go out here and get bigger, my y coordinates are getting smaller. So on a negative association, they go in opposite directions. So when one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller. And then the third one, it can look something like this. Do you see a pattern? If there is no particular pattern or direction, is that what we call it? It has no association or correlation. Okay? It is pretty random data. There isn't any connection between the data and what's happening. Obviously, no associations aren't a whole lot of fun. You can't do much with them, but hey, there's things in the real world that do that. There just isn't any relationship between the two variables. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some data and we're going to put it into our calculations and scatter plot them. Okay, so the data I'm going to have you use, if you flip to page 105, it's the chart right above number 26. You see a chart right above number 26 and it talks about year of birth and life expectancy. So like it's saying if you were born in 1900, your life expectancy was 47.3 years.
graphing year, so I'm going to type year. Oops, I got year. <laughs> Where's my one? Okay. It will not capitalize, so don't worry about ever trying to capitalize. It won't capitalize. It doesn't do that. Okay, so we want year in the first column, and then your headings you type cannot have any spaces in them. You cannot put spaces so we need to find some way, how are we going to write life expectancy, what abbreviation are we going to use to put the life expectancy, we can't do two separate words, they won't let you. Okay? But it's not, it's not, it's how long you live. Um, lifespan, there's a good one. Okay, we'll do lifespan, but don't put a space between, make it all one word. So go over to column B, you'll have to hit, you'll have to hit enter first. You'll have to hit enter and then arrow over to column B and type lifespan. Okay, um, did I explain to you why they did the keyboard that way? Okay, they did the keyboard that way. You cannot take into the ACT or the SAT, say, any device that has a, an actual typewriter like keyboard. Because you can cheat and put too much information in it. So Texas Instruments intentionally made this calculator normal ABCD so that you would be able to take it into the ACT. Yeah. So we're doing L I F E S P A N. All right. So year and lifespan. But make sure, and that's where I need to check before we go astray here, um, that we all got it up there by the A and B. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, because we wasted a whole lot of time last class trying to get those people straightened out because they typed it down here, and it did not work well. So everybody's got in the right spot. Okay, now you're just going to type numbers. So you're going to go down to the first cell. This line up here that's kind of shaded, you can actually type a formula on that cell and then it will calculate, you can type a formula to calculate what it is for one degree more. We aren't doing that, but you don't want to type anything on that grade line. So if you notice, our year started at 1900 and you'll, if you hit enter, it'll go down, they go up by 10. So you're going from 1900 to 1990. Then you're going to go to the second column and type all the um, number of years that person lived their life expectancy. I'm going to go to this one. at all. This works like a spreadsheet. You can type formulas in it like a spreadsheet. It is a spreadsheet. But it's nice that you can also pull it over and then create a graph out of it. Okay, notice since we created a document, you have a 1.1 up here, which means you're on document one, page one. Everybody's in, Chad is in. Sweet. 
So now we're actually ready to make the scatter pot. And this is, if you're looking at the purple sheet, this is where you may need it to help you remember what to do. I have to have a different kind of page in order to make a graph. So I need to somehow say, hey, I am ready to make the graph out of this. I need to add another page. And you will notice, if you look over here, you have a doc key, and above it it says plus page. That means add a page. So I'm going to do, okay, somebody's texting me. <laughs> I'm going to do control plus, add a page. And here's the difference. If you want to graph with a y equals, if you want to graph with normal equations, like y equals 7x plus 3, you add a graph page. If you want to graph data that you have you know, you're plotting, you need a data and statistics page for this one. So it's two different kind of pages. So you're going to hit number five, add data and statistics. And, okay, you get some dots there. It don't drag them around, because if you drag around, you change the values. They will drag around. You can drop them and drag them. Okay, but we're not done yet. First of all, is everybody seeing that? going to number five, add a data and statistics page. Oh, okay. It does, it does the refresh after. Okay. So, we've got our points. Now, this is the cool part. This is the fun part. When you, you have to tell it, do we want years to be on the x-axis or do we want years to be on the y-axis? Which seems more logical? Where would you put years? Normally, you put years across the x. So, You'll have to arrow down here with your pointer, and there's a box right here where it says click to add variable. If you click there, it will give you a choice. Do you want lifespan or year? It, because we named those columns over there in that spreadsheet, it's picking them up here, and it knows, oh, these are the two choices. You all said you wanted year, so you're going to choose year, and it's going to bring the years down onto the x-axis. Okay, then, this is the fun part. The part I don't like, though, is that if, you, if you haven't done this, we can tell it what to put on the y-axis, but is there any place to click? It doesn't look like it. But if you arrow over here, once you get over here, a box will appear. Once you get your cursor over in this area, there is a box here, and when you click it, that box that's over there, you can say lifespan on the y-axis, and it will graph it. made a scatter plot. My major goal for right now is for you to be able to get a scatter plot. There's one other thing I do want to at least show you how to do. This calculator is way better than my old calculator. It, notice, it decided how to scale the graph. And it's got some built-in programming for how it does that. But you can, all you can control is where it starts and where it ends in each axis. So we could change the scaling on the axis. We can't tell it how apart, far apart to label the numbers, but we can go make changes in where it starts and ends on the x and y axis. And that's number three on your purple sheet. If you read number three, you'll see I need to go where to change the scaling. And where does it say to go? Menu, five, window. Your viewing window, that's why they call it window. You're changing your viewing window. So you're going to go to five window, and then what? Number one, window settings. Okay. It picked, it, it's got your x-axis starting in 1891 and ending in 1999. Suppose I plan to put some more years on it. I want this to go farther out. Maybe I want it to go to 2020. So I would go down to the second one, and by the way, to move from one one to the next, it's actually easy to hit tab. Tab, anytime you're doing these boxes, hit tab. Change it to 2020. Okay, y-axis. They started at 44.49 and went to 78.21. Do you think that's a little bizarre? 
to screen decimals, it's got some mathematical calculation it does. Me personally, I'd rather have my axis starting on nice round easy numbers. So where would you like to start the y axis? That to be something lower than that. 40, we can go, we can take it down and start at zero if you want to start at zero. So it's up to you. Zero years of age, zero years of life, the whatever. The preferences, 40, 40. Okay, we go to 40. Tab. Okay, why not? Maybe I want to, I plan to actually graph, get the data to graph the current stats. That, that starts in 1990, so that's kind of old. How high do you think we're, we need to go for future graphs? Age 90? Okay, age 90 sounds good. We'll go age 90. And then tab and hit OK. And change the look of the graph some. Not dramatically different, but some different. But I want you all to realize when you see graphs, particularly you see graphs printed in the newspaper on television, people who know their math know how to sw use a graph to sway your opinion. So like, I can make this look, oh, okay, there's been some increase in life expectancy. But I could have gone back there, and I could have, I want to show you the difference if I had, ah, look, let's just go there. What if I had set mine at zero? Why? Okay. Doesn't look like it increased as much. I can change gears and make it front. I could spread this out and um, make it run really. I'm not sure if I remember my data. Suppose I made that. Do it 44. Run. But I made this run to only uh, 78. You know, that made it look like big, serious growth. You can change graph. You can change the way people read a graph and interpret a graph by how you scale it. I could take test scores and I can make my students look like they're doing wonderfully well, or I can make them look like it's a disaster because I had all of the rows simply by how I scale a graph. You need to be aware of that, particularly if uh, political groups are presenting data to you. They're going to sway those graphs and all those that they take the puffs, the ideas they want you to take on. So people, I don't want to say lie, but can adjust the truth a little bit by how they scale the graphs. And so as educated mathematicians, you are going to look at the scale and go, that's kind of funky. <laughs> you have to pay attention to stuff like that. Okay, so is that amazingly difficult in order to scale a graph? You'll probably find you need the purple sheet once or twice to kind of get the gist of what you're doing. Um, you're doing the graphing part is this part over here with section 2 5 we're going to do. There's just two graphs. There's, it's on the same page we got there. There's two out of those charts you're going to draw graphs for. Please do be sure you put them in new documents. And um, if you want to save the document to make sure you don't lose it, there's a couple ways to save. You can hit this arrow and it drops down and you'll get file, save as. Or probably the faster way is if you go to your calculator and do control calculator. Which I, right above that, control calculator. It pops up and says, do you want to save in my documents? Yep, that's fine. File name, type the name you want to save it as. It'll save it. If you don't choose to save your documents, it'll be in there as unsaved documents. <laughs> so keep this. But um, as soon as you start a new, do a new document, it's going to erase the old unsaved one if you haven't saved it. For my purposes, I will check homework on that, and I will want to keep your graph. So you'll need to save those graphs for what I can save them. This one we practice on, I'll show you later. But the two on your homework, I want you to save. And you can do those. Um, you can do those. You can do page one, page two. You can just add another page and do another spreadsheet, add another spreadsheet, put in more data, add another graph. You can go back and forth between your pages. You can either use the cursor and click on them or 
control these little symbols right here, your right and left arrow. Control, left arrow. So will take me back to the first page. Control, right arrow will take me forward. So you can hop, hop the finger page and move it up. 